Welcome back to the second segment of Community Tapestry. And if you're just joining us, my name is Napoleon Bell. I'm Executive Director with the City of Columbus Community Relations Commission. And I'm this is Tony, Tony Teague. Teague. Uh, back again for our second segment of the, of the program. And we were talking about, you know, in the last segment in regards to the great weather and all the events that are going mm -hmm. on things. And, but most importantly, we're always talking about the youth that are doing great things in our community and how we lift them up to, to really show that we've got a lot of great youth out there doing positive things. Yes, they are. And so our next two guests, you know, are working with youth to make a big difference in their communities and other communities and uh, with, with different programs and, and something that, you know, you don't hear a lot about, right. robotics. About robotics and, 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 and you it's know, just, I, I remember when they had to show the, the, the robot wars and all that kind of, you know, <laughs> and I remember watching that all the time, and, but something that I don't know nothing about, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. but these young kids nowadays are making such an impact on our community, and so I want to talk more about that with our guests here that we have today, so let's get to that. Um, our first guest uh, is Steve Francis. He's of Honda of America, but also is doing some, some work with Northern High School and the STEM programs there. And so we're going to talk some more about that and about the robotic program there. But then also, uh, a familiar face also to, to the city of Columbus is Mr. Steve Miller. He's a director of the annual fund at St. Charles Preparatory School. They've got a heck of a, I guess, a robotics program there that we're going to talk about. And some of the great things that the, the kids are doing there and some other uh, programs that you've got going on there. So let's first get started. You know, I'll, I'll start with Steve uh, Francis to our left. Um, the robotic program, STEM program, Northland. Tell us a little bit about, more about what's going on there and, and how that has, has come about and how Honda's involved. In that. Sure. Uh, Honda developed what they call the Honda STEM Club Mentorship Program. And STEM, again, is science, technology, engineering, and math. And this sprung from a lot of federal and state appropriated dollars that's promoting STEM education for our young people, partly to make America more competitive in terms of the, the global uh, economy and the technology surge, uh, but also to um, empower our people with gainful employment because mm. uh, the jobs that are out there now, let alone the jobs coming in the future, are gonna be STEM based jobs and if we don't have our kids talking the STEM language and knowing the STEM disciplines then they're going to be left out of those gainful employment uh, jobs that are going to give them future security for their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, so we established a program it entails engineers from our facilities volunteering their time as mentors to these high school students as they engage in robotics competitions, math competitions, um, structural dynamics like build, building bridges, uh, uh, engineering design competitions, uh, anything that relates to science, technology, engineering, and math. Uh, we promote that so that at an early age they get excited about math, uh, which I was not at school. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah. But you are now. And, and, but that's the language mm -hmm. of today and tomorrow. So uh, it, it empowers them to a promising future and doesn't make them a statistic, which we've uh, had a lot of experience with and that that's something that we don't want. Mm -hmm. What's the age range of the uh, children that you're currently working with? It's high school age and again the the promotion of STEM disciplines needs to occur before high school. Uh, middle school is a sweet spot for that and even elementary school some mm -hmm. are trying to go even deeper but our corporate goal is more workforce stability driven so we want to catch them at the high school age so that we can encourage them to go to college and major in STEM discipline and maybe even promote them with a scholarship or an internship that winds them, winds them up coming right back into our door as an employee someday. So that's the, the back, the, the indirect goal of workforce mm -hmm. stability. Right, mm -hmm. so you're, you're doing the pay it forward. Correct. <laughs> Correct. This is good, and retain the uh, creative class. So, yes. perfect. Well, you know, let's, let's in turn to, to real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, our other Steve over there. Uh, from from St. Charles, and you know, uh, Steve Francis touched on the robotics program mm -hmm. and, and part of this as part of the STEM. But you're working with uh, the the youth there um, on a particular robotics program, and, and there's a competition of some sort also. Yeah, first of all, I want to thank you for this opportunity to come and speak to you and your viewing audience, and also want to thank Steve for his uh, involvement in allowing us initial opportunity to get involved in robotics. As Steve mentioned, we started our relationship seeking uh, corporate relations for our graduates for college scholarships and internships for employment after graduation and really talked about trying to have a 
academic as well as the social interaction uh, between the programs he was already working with at Columbus Public Schools. Uh, and after uh, we started initial conversations and had an opportunity to visit with Joe Rader uh, at uh, Fort Hayes and his uh, program down there with the teams he's working with at Columbus Public Schools, our principal, Dominic Cavella, was so uh, excited about what he saw, he felt like it was going to be a great opportunity for us to get involved in robotics, primarily because St. Charles has a history of high academic achieving students, and we wanted to offer them an additional opportunity to have a hands-on application for science and robotics. Since STEM is the new buzzword in education, St. Charles has historically and traditionally been involved in STEM education from our traditional college preparatory curriculum. But we felt uh, with the success of our JETS program, which is an engineering program that uh, Dr. Sarah Vandermeer has championed over the last uh, five or six years, in the last four years we won national championship status with that group. Her having about 70 students in that program was really too much for her to handle. So this robotics opportunity was a chance for us to bring another opportunity to our students and kids to get involved in a different aspect of robotics. And it's been an exciting opportunity for us. And we are participating in the U.S. first uh, regional competition at Cleveland, uh, March 23rd and 24th and we're very, very excited. Uh, part of that opportunity came along with working with Steve uh, and his group, uh, Metro High School, uh, the Central Ohio Robotics Initiative, uh, as well as uh, our partnership with CSG, and they're mentoring us. Uh, since This is a first year program for us, and we're just excited to have that opportunity, along with working with some OSU engineering students uh, and we're, we built our robot at the Center for Automotive Research up on Ohio State's campus. So it's been a collaborative partnership with Steve, Honda, uh, Metro School, Dublin was also very, very helpful, Dublin Kaufman High School, Greg King and his group, uh, and some uh, corporate uh, sponsors from OMTEC and Ward Engineering that really helped us enter this opportunity because I know absolutely nothing about robotics. Uh, just was blessed to have an opportunity to try to put resources together to bring this opportunity for our students to be successful. This is amazing. What are some of the things that the students are, what's some of the feedback you're getting from, from your students so far? Uh, it's, it's been uh, really an outstanding opportunity because our JETS program really is a pencil and paper type of competition, but this robotics competition is really hands-on. There's uh, computer programming that's involved, uh, actually building the robot with tools. Uh, there's electrical engineering that's involved, uh, physics, so it's applied science, uh, teamwork, uh, team building, uh, and in U.S. First, one of their big words is, um, co uh, is co cooperative collaboration, that each team member has to work to help their own individual team as well as other partner teams. So it's been a great experience to see them from a design concept to building a robot for the task that's been given. And this year, it's a rebound rumble, so our robot shoots baskets. So it's, it's real exciting, real exciting. <laughs> I could use that robot. <laughs> <laughs> no, you need one for the golf course, I heard. Well, that's your golf course and <laughs> I was basket. just thinking about um, you know, so where some of the gap might be. Even with St. Charles Preparatory School, um, a lot of the kids are from the local area and I think it's been my experience that most children in the rural areas because they're dealing with farm equipment and you know there's some hands-on unless local kids have you know parents and fathers that are saying here son fix this on the car and nowadays cars are so advanced that you can't just go in the garage and tinker around so I think it's pretty apropos that they have this hands-on learning experience ab above and beyond theory. Absolutely we, we had an opportunity Steve uh, and Honda put on a, uh, a seminar for uh, teams and really talked about the connection of robotics, uh, job application, uh, STEM education, and, and how it all comes together. Uh, and with what they're doing out of Honda, the technology is just so amazing. We feel that getting kids involved in robotics, understanding the application of math and science is important for future workforce. Uh, but as we know, in a Rust Belt community, Many of those jobs have gone away from traditional manual labor, and if you don't know about robotics, know how to work on a robotic, fix a robot, uh, a robot's going to be doing your job in the future. So it's very important, and the kids have really just jumped in there, and it's just amazing uh, throughout the country 
uh, this is such a big, big program. For this Cleveland um, regional competition, they're expecting about 10,000 people. There's going to be over 30 teams from Canada, New York, Pennsylvania, wow. all over Ohio, Washington, D.C. And for national competition that will be held in St. Louis, they're expecting 60,000 people. So this oh, is really, wow. really a big deal. I, and, hope you, I hope you bring back lots of pictures and some footage, um, especially of the kids and their experience to share for us. Yeah, we're we're really, excited. Show. really excited about it. And, and the Columbus Public Schools teams have done well for the past number of years. Northland's done an outstanding job. East High School's done an outstanding job. So you know, we are uh, just excited to be part of this for the first time and building to try to get more students involved. See, and this is the thing that, that we really need to highlight a lot of, too, because you know, I, I hear team. And often when we, when we think of schools and teams, we think of basketball and football and, and track. But we don't... Spanish club. Well, so, okay, Spanish <laughs> club. But, um, but we don't hear about often enough, you know, these type of teams and, and that, that you're talking about now that, that are making an impact uh, on the community because they're, they're taking that knowledge and going further with it. And what I'm also hearing is that, you know, you've talked about, okay, you got the high school, so you're collaborating then with other high schools. Yes. And then also you're collaborating with... Uh, the college colleges, yes. and then also with 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 Businesses. corporate yes. and business, yeah. mm -hmm. and so they're seeing the the, the full you know uh, uh, navigating the, the the full set of things that you need to know mm -hmm. uh, going into into your career. Absolutely. So that's that's uh, that's a holistic let me, approach. Let me to lay this. out the foundation for a successful STEM club. Parent mm -hmm. is probably the most important advocate to reinforce those types of things to the child when they come home. Uh, when they're doing that math homework, they might want to quit, but the mother or the father has to reinforce their commitment to it. And then the industry partners, such as Honda mm -hmm. um, the, uh, or AEP or Battelle Battelle. or whoever. Uh, and then the academic partners, the OSU College of Engineering and other academic settings that offer those engineering uh, and technical programs. Uh, and then there's the uh, professional and trade organizations like National Society of Black Engineers mm -hmm. that sponsors a uh, tri what they call trimathalon. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a math competition basically mm -hmm. and Northland, uh, just to use them as an example, they have competed very well in that competition nationally and they've won number one uh, in, in that championship uh, just recently as, as a couple of years ago. Uh, so they're going to the national competition again in Pittsburgh late March. Mm -hmm. It's right off the hills of the first robotics competition. So they're actually sending a team of people to compete in the first robotics competition in Cleveland. And they're also sending a team to, to participate in the trimathlon competition mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh. Um, but, you know, the, the hands-on thing uh, is very important. We, we do a lot of hands-on at Honda. And, and so it's nothing like touching and feeling to get a kid excited about doing something. You know, computer work and pencil and paper work is sort of abstract, but when you get them engaged physically in, act, in, 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 in activities, mm -hmm. it makes a big difference. So part of our program, our mentorship program, is bringing them out to Honda to see the production environment and to see how many uh, robots and ro how much robotics is used in the production process. Mm -hmm. um, you'd be amazed. Uh, not that it's eliminating jobs, but it's a necessary part of precision manufacturing that goes into the high quality of our products. So uh, once they see that this stuff, this math that they're working on translates into programming the robot, which translates into a finished product in a, a quality Honda automobile, then the lights come on and then they see the relevance of what they're doing and, and the value that they mm -hmm. add to something when they can say, I did that or I engineered that. Or I can do that. Yeah. That over there, I can build this, I can build that. That's right. So it's making STEM sexy. Mm -hmm. and, and to use Northland as an example again, with Sullinger and, and the crew, they won the national, uh, the, the state championship mm -hmm. basketball. So during the same assembly, they recognized their STEM club students along with the basketball team because they had placed first in the uh, national wow. trimathlon that's, that's competition. Right. So it, that's a prime example of us making, making smart sexy mm -hmm. by recognizing the basketball team on the same day that you recognize the STEM club. And you know, why not have them uh, have a letter on their jacket? It might be an right. a, a, a atomic symbol or something like right. that, or an atom or something, but it recognizes their, their, their excellence in STEM education. Right. 
uh, so that they can be proud when they walk the halls. Well, right. and, and they should. And, I'm, and just one quick thing, because I really feel strongly about this, and, and, and I know you do also, Tony, in regards to what we've talked about is lifting up our, our young people of, of the things that they're doing. And any time that, they, that, that they're involved in, in, in this, and if, if use our program to, to do that, to lift them up, because we want to make sure that, that they get all the attaboys and everything that, that's deserving to them for what they're doing, because they're, they're the leaders, and, and that's what other young people are looking up to. They're looking up to them, and they're saying, hey, they can do it. Yeah. You know, John did it, and this, I can do that too. Well, and another critically important part of successful STEM clubs is the, the faculty and those advisors and administrators. And, and Steve uh, is a prime example of the commitment that it takes to make something successful. You know, he said he doesn't know anything about STEM, but he I bet he, 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 he knows a lot about some other things that, yeah. that make things happen. And with his commitment and with Mr. Cavallo, uh, his, you know, he took him to the spot, saw the robot being made and the excitement of the kids, and now Mr. Cavallo's on fire. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it doesn't take much to, to get people on board with something that's that positive. Mm -hmm. Now, Steve Miller, speaking about uh, speaking of just making that connection and the things that you do know how to do, what you know, what are all the moving pieces that you had to manage and advocate for? Help help our viewing audience kind of see how this came together, um, because you spoke so eloquently about the other partnerships, but I think that's just a sense of your own humility. Well, uh, again, I think it's truly a blessing to have an opportunity to serve and, and try to make sure we're making connections for young people uh, along with the uh, work that we do in the community uh, as a member of the Mentoring Center's Advisory Council here in Central Ohio and as well as the African American Advisory Council for Big Brothers and Big Sisters. I've been working with youth for a long time. Uh, the opportunity to pull this robotics piece together was a challenge because uh, my principal, Mr. Cavello, uh, had assured me that he was going to hire someone to uh, make this program happen. And uh, as we got ready to start this year, I said, okay, Mr. Cavello, who's, who's it going to be? And he goes, You're it's going to be you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, because of uh, a number of uh, personal and professional relationships I have in the community, uh, I just began to talk with people that had resources because there is a financial commitment to building this robot. Sure. It, it is an expensive club. Uh, but through uh, grants, uh, fundraising, personal support uh, from the professional community and the St. Charles community, uh, we've been successful in providing aid uh, to put this program on. Uh, just partnership with OSU, with Columbus School for Girls, with Dublin Kaufman High School, with uh, Andy Bruning over at Metro High School, with Honda, uh, and also a couple of fathers who are engineers because it's really important that the kids understand that this is an engineering process, so it's important for them to understand it from, if I'm going to be an engineer, this guy owns an engineering company, and this is how we project manage, this is how we problem solve, this is how we work together, this is the process of having them be able to go to businesses like Tom McAsee's Home Tech and Tom Ward's Ward Engineering was really an opportunity for them to really see engineering in practice and in action, uh, but also just trying to provide uh, community connections for our students so they can understand the value uh, that the STEM education brought, uh, different perspectives from different schools, teams, organizations, uh, and really to try to get the community and the school engaged in STEM learning is so, so important because it's becoming so much a part of many academic uh, curriculums that we just felt it was important for us as St. Charles being the number one academic high school in the state of Ohio to be able to participate and offer that type of solution for our students. It sounds like your program is rather inclusive um, and I think that that's another push that you have going at St. Charles Preparatory that you're looking for more inroads for uh, diversity and inclusivity and it seems like you know I think Mr. Covella did a great job with remembering uh, you were auditioning for the job the whole time. <laughs> well absolutely and we're real excited about the St. Charles commitment to increase diversity at St. Charles. We want to try to make sure that our student body looks more like the community that we live in, looks more like the jobs that they will have, the colleges that they will attend. So we have an active campaign right now to increase our minority student enrollment at St. Charles. Uh, one of the other things that we want to make sure everybody understands is that you don't have to be a genius, you don't have to be Catholic, you don't have to be anything but a student who's willing to accept the challenge to do hard work. St. Charles is academically challenging and rigorous, but it's available as an educational destination for any student all over the city of Columbus. 
uh, and we gave away over $1.3 million of financial aid last year. And as the director of the annual fund, my primary job outside of robotics, coaching basketball, minority student development, <laughs> is fundraising to make sure we provide enough money available so students have that opportunity. So we've got a special uh, program arrangement with KIPP uh, Journey Academy, which is a charter school in the Linden area, and we've got special funds raised specifically for those students. We're also working with Monroe Middle School and Columbus Public Schools, nice. All Saints Academy, uh, and Mansion Day School. So we're really reaching out and are looking to create more partnerships to provide opportunities for Latino students, African American students, Asian students, Somalian students to come to St. Charles as the number one academic destination here in Columbus. Right. Well, let, let me piggyback on that though, because you know some some uh, other diverse populations might be a little hesitant to to go to St. Charles. And and are there any uh, student groups or uh, mentoring programs that are within St. Charles to kind of help them navigate St. Charles and, 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 and acclimate them to, to the St. Charles program. There is, and what Mr. Cavella wanted to make sure that we were doing is making sure that we were providing an educational environment where everybody was comfortable. Uh, we do have a student organization I started there last year called My Brother's Keeper, uh, and it's a minority student organization designed to make sure that we're providing uh, an enriching environment for each student, uh, tutoring uh, and support for students and their families so that they're comfortable in this environment because it is a unique environment that's academically challenging so we want to make sure that students come to school prepared to be successful and part of that program includes a summer school enrichment program that we have to prepare them in algebra latin and study skills uh, but also making sure they're comfortable in this environment as well as uh, tutoring that we have uh, before school and after school and every teacher at St. Charles provides their home phone number for every student. So there is support there, uh, and it's expected that you seek that support to help make you successful. And that's part of the maturity that we're trying to teach our young men to be responsible students. Wow. That, 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 I mean, that's, that's a lot of great things going on at St. Charles, I mean, and, and also with Hunt, I mean, and that collaboration with robotics. Now, for the average, how, do, how does one get involved? in the robotics overall program. I know this just, just isn't at St. Charles, but how would somebody, you know, one of our viewing audience say, you know, I, I oh, like I robots involved. or I play yeah. games, you know, how can I get involved in well, that? I, I can tell you that in, within the Honda STEM Club Mentorship Program, there are six schools currently because okay. we can only handle the, a number of schools based on the number of volunteer mentors we have coming forward. But we have one in Lima, the Lima school system, the Benjamin Logan uh, school system in Logan County. Mm -hmm. And these are sp strategically selected because they're near Honda's production facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have uh, Metro High School okay. uh, here in Columbus. And then we have four schools in the city uh, school system, Northland, East, um, Walnut Ridge, and um, I knew I was going to forget one. Uh, but at we'll any rate, to, to get involved, you just seek out the science or, or math uh, teachers in your school and ask them if they have a STEM club program. Um, but, but to a more important point, it takes funding. Uh, mm -hmm. The first robotics competition, for example, takes a, on the average of $5,000 to participate in that. And mm -hmm. a lot of the city school systems don't have that cash laying around in addition to the other budget constraints they have. So uh, we have our clubs really in financial need and we try when we can to support them financially along with the mentorship uh, volunteering uh, from the engineers. So it's, it's a tough road to hoe, but it takes a collaborative effort of, of funding, partnerships, uh, staff support from the school, and parental support. So are you, is it $5,000 per participant or per team? Per team. Per team, okay. And we've had schools partnering because singly they couldn't afford to do it, but together they could do a team together, and, and that, that builds with that team teamwork that, that Steve talked mm -hmm. about. Steve, can you, can you frame for us, um, I know that um, in 2010 there was a study about, you know, attracting and retaining the, the creative class, and it was a follow-up study, and they were saying that even in Ohio alone there's 13,000 jobs that are ready and available that, that the workforce just isn't currently qualified for. Can you paint that maybe horrifying picture of, you know, where that talent gap is in Ohio and just reinforce that with what, 
with what you've already talked about uh, with regard to getting high schoolers prepared. You're absolutely right. Uh, when, when I hear the political pundits and the candidates talking about creating jobs, there are jobs out there. We just don't have the skill, to, the requisite skill to do the jobs that are available. And that's the STEM picture. Again, I, I said that the jobs of today, let alone tomorrow, are already STEM jobs, and so we're finding a vacuum of people that have the right skills to perform the jobs. And we have that, that issue at Honda. I mean, when we go out to recruit, um, plenty of people are out there with skills, but do they have the requisite skills that fit uh, the, the, the technology that we have in our shop? And that's sometimes the answer is no. So we have to keep looking until we find it. Right. And also, there are multiple people competing for those highly skilled folks. So, you know, they're few and far between. Right. So. Okay, we got, I, I'm not, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> we're running out of time. We need another show. <laughs> so I swear, we need another show. Um, if they want to get a hold of, 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 of St. Charles, you know, get some more information mm -hmm. on being a part of the school or helping out with Honda, you know, the stem, but however we can get put this together, what, what number should they call for? Uh, the main number in St. Charles is 252-6714. Uh, my number in development is 252-9288. We're right at 2010 East Broad Street, and we welcome any opportunity to work with and partner with any organization that wants to help promote science and technology for our robotics program and also interested individuals uh, to attend St. Charles and particularly any minority student that has an interest in coming to St. Charles. Excellent. Honda? Certainly they can call me about uh, STEM clubs if okay. there's a school that's interested in forming a club. That number is 937 uh, six four four six five one three. That's Excellent. Right. Excellent. We appreciate your time. Thank you. We're running out of time and, and also uh, if, if you want to be our friend on Facebook, friend us at Nap Bell, that's N A P B E L L. Also like the Columbus Community Relations Commission. Also like the, our civil rights tour, fill it up. We've got fifty four people going. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Karen Frooms and Smooth Corporation, Pepsi, Nationwide Children's Hospital, um, uh, Honda of America, <laughs> Limited you. Brands, and the Griffin Foundation. I'd like to thank all of you for being a part and sponsoring our young people to be able to go on this trip and make mm -hmm. it uh, possible for everyone to go on the tour. And uh, we hope to see you back. Remember, our show is on every second Wednesday of the month, every second Wednesday of the month, and in place throughout the weekends, 7 o'clock p.m. I'm glad you're here. Glad you guys were, were here. Thank you. Learned some Thank great you. things, and I want to build a robot. All right, <laughs> robot it is. All right. Well, um, have a great week, and my name is Napoleon Bell. Tony Teague. Have a great week and take care.